Let's join Rina Shah, political strategist and a former senior presidential campaign advisor, joins us now from Washington, D.C. Ms. Shah, good to have you on the programme. Uh, we know that you have multiple opinions about what's going on right now in the American political sphere. And, of course, we seem to be heading towards divisive politics again uh, and a position on policy and the way forward for the United States. Just as an overview of what's gone on, in, certainly in the last seven days, we've got the Democrats wondering about what's going to happen with President Trump, uh, with President Biden, pardon me, if anything, and Donald Trump, who now is the official nominee for the Republicans. You know, I think a lot about how we see our politics this day and age. And seeing that some 12,000 people have shown up to see Trump in his first rally after he was almost assassinated at his last rally a week ago uh, tells you that American people view politics as a spectacle. What I also saw this past week at the Republican National Convention felt a lot like attending a circus. There was this amusement there, that freak over there. I, I have to be frank about it. You know, freak shows are long held at, at carnivals. And that is what I see saw on display at the RNC. It was meant to get people entertained. It was meant to rev them up, not in a positive way, I don't think. I think it was meant to drive some degree of anger because the chanting was fight, fight, fight. So yes, that's a, the that's a thing that these two candidates have to do all the way from now until November. We have some four months ahead of us. And I think, you know, our politics are not just careening towards a divisiveness. We are almost there fully because the way in which our politics transpires every day of the week. You and I were there together last Saturday. For me, it's Saturday night. For you, it would have been Saturday afternoon watching events unfold in Butler, Pennsylvania. I think our, our jaws open at what was going on in shock. And yet it doesn't seem to have impinged too much at the moment on... Um, the way Republicans feel about policy. They're talking more about the assassination attempt than they are about policy. Let me just tell you, I'm sure you've been listening in to pre uh, Donald Trump's speech at the moment in Michigan. He's been talking about the EV mandate being cancelled. He's been talking about shark attacks. Uh, and now he's been talking about a comb-over that doesn't look great on camera. It swings from one extreme to another, and yet... I suppose the public at large, those that are sitting on the fence wondering whether they want to vote for Trump again, are listening to and watching all of this. How else can you describe a Trump rally this day and age? It's some place you attend to kind of see what's happening. Uh, how funny is it going to get? How uh, how sensational is it going to get? You know, he says these things because he wants to elicit the reaction from the crowd that he is fun. Uh, not just amusing, but fun. And and that is what I think is seriously a problem for our electorate, because voting is a right that we have, given how many soldiers have died in our wars, how many civil rights activists have lost their lives. You know, we ought to be taking this duty of voting very seriously. And it seems, by and large, that a lot of uh, my fellow Americans are not doing that. I mean, simply attending a rally just to kind of see what's going on, that, that's unserious in every way. And so I don't think much has changed since last week. Uh, it was a jarring moment. I remember not being able to sleep that night. You know, I've disagreed with President Trump for, for since the day he announced his candidacy. I've been taken aback by the things that have come out of his mouth. I've been shocked by the actions of him and his administration. But I was really scared about a, the most immediate former president of the United States being shot to death at a rally stage. I mean, that's just not the America that I was raised knowing is possible. And uh, we're in an extreme place. We're in a place where people don't want to believe the facts right in front of their very eyes. We have a lot of work to do to heal the divisions here. And it starts by, by stopping stopping the blame game. And that's what I have seen Republicans do by misdirecting their anger at the Secret Service. Uh, and Rena, ju just briefly, I mean, how difficult is the road ahead, not just really for the Republicans and for Trump to actually win people over, but for the Democrats too. President Biden really has his back up against a wall right now.
sanitation operation. All the talk lately has been about, oh my goodness, the Democrats are in disarray. People have been exclaiming that every day of the week, whether it's actual pundits or journalists. Uh, and then there's also been Biden is vulnerable. That's the talk of the week as well. I want to push all that aside for a moment and say, I'm going to put on my strategist hat. I, if I were advising the Republicans, which I am not, I would say Trump is vulnerable. The numbers are simply not on his side. Only 57% of eligible voters cast ballots in the election 2020. That's a serious issue because that means so many of my fellow Americans do not want to turn up to the polls. We have no idea, uh, no empirical evidence that can lead us to draw sensible conclusions about what those Americans will do this time. And if Trump was kicked out last time, I wouldn't just assume that people are going to suddenly have a change of heart and click for him. So what we ought to do is start to look at reality. Trump, Vance are vulnerable, and they have to do a lot to get people to turn out for them. It doesn't mean that the Democrats are in perfect condition and should be sitting pretty and feeling like they don't have to do the work. But I'm just saying there's a lot that has happened in this campaign already and expect a lot more to happen in a very condensed time frame that could truly change the outcome in November. Yeah, indeed. We often say a week is a long time in politics. My word, we've got several weeks ahead of us. Rena Shah, uh, thanks so much for joining us from Washington, D.C. Good to see you. Thank you, Sohail.